So what are we seeing here? Um, step one is what our group did first, and that was deciding what goes on in an explorer's mind and how much of it is going on. Uh, we said that curiosity was the biggest. Do you want me to say why for each one? Sure. No. Uh, okay, why, why we said talking? curiosity was the biggest at 14, 30 seconds because um, it was the one that we that we thought was the biggest definition of exploration. Like exploration is kind of trying to find something in the unknown and curiosity is the want to explore, the want to try to find something in the unknown, try to discover something. Um, so that was the biggest, the second biggest was reflection, or as we originally put it, looking at the past and the future. Um, we thought that it was um, 7.30 seconds, uh, as displayed there in blue. What was curiosity? It was 14. It was yellow. 14, 30 seconds. And so there's three and a half blocks. Yeah. Shaded, and that corresponds to seven. Yeah, because um, it wouldn't let me do thirty-two in the table, mm -hmm. so I instead I did sixteen. So each one of those symbolizes two. So you just multiply what you've got there by two. So say there's seven for curiosity. That's actually fourteen. Okay. Three point five is seven, and so on. Okay. Um, so next was curio creativity, which was four thirty seconds, or two blocks. Um, and we put um, creativity there because of the examples that we've seen of explorers, and we hadn't seen an explorer yet that wasn't creative. Uh, even like mm, even Mag Magellan, they had to find ways to survive, and. No, you can't just live a normal way. Like you can't do what they did back in Spain and Portugal. You can't live that type. You have to f come up with a different creative way to survive, like hunting your own food. So it's kind of like creative solutions to unknowns. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and then courage. Well, most explorers are courageous, or as we originally put it, fearless. Mm -hmm. But then we figured out that, that wasn't quite possible. Nobody can have no fears. Courage is more being afraid, but being able to do something even though you're afraid of it. Okay, understood. Uh, focus. Well, you, I don't think you can really do anything without being focused. You can't write a summative. You can't, can't. I mean, in the extreme circumstance, if you're not, if your brain's not working, you can't walk because you're not focused on walking. Uh, caution uh, to balance out the courage because some people they can be too courageous and then they'll just kind of like Magellan he's like we can take on a huge amount of people and then he got himself killed because he didn't have enough caution. <laughs> um, yeah actually if you look under Magellan's caution I put two <laughs> for a reason. He, he, he wasn't very cautious about doing things. Um, and that was our first step, just deciding those things. What we originally did was we had that picture of the uh, of the, the thing, the activity you gave to us where we had to decide what was going on in Explorer's mind. Right. Uh, and we just took the biggest ones from that and drew them kind of not, uh, on, a, on a stick chart. Like those, do you know what I'm talking about, stick charts? Mm -hmm. Um, we drew them out on a stick chart, and then we divided the stick chart into 30 seconds, and that's how we got 30 seconds, because it was just kind of a random number. Um, how did you come up with the 32, though? Did you say it was, it was determined by the ruler? It was, it was determined, yeah, kind of by how long our stick chart was and how much was shaded of each. So it was, it was random. What would be your preferred way of doing it? Uh... That was the easiest way for us, cause it. I mean, in terms for everyone to understand it and to not get like too caught up in doing everything in your head, 
and I, I can I can sometimes need I sometimes need visuals to understand things more. So that was that was a good way of doing it. Um, there are certainly more efficient ways, but that way was the way that works best for visual learners. And there, are Alex and Joseph, they both learn well visually, and I'm okay with learning visually. Um, yeah. And by visually, you mean you drew the we drew. picture first, and then divided it from there. Is yeah. that right? Does that mean it was 32 centimeters long? We we didn't actually. It was more or less a random number. It could because it just somehow it was randomly like div it could divide into like 32 of my pinky or something like that. Okay. It's some random measurement. Mm -hmm. Uh. And can you can you talk about say Lewis and Clark and just take us through each each of the categories? Okay, and Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. Here we go. So the first thing we did, we do the second step was um, we graded them as on a rubric with uh, like you know the three through five grades, mm -hmm. the, the ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives that we get on our report cards. And we put them through those big idea, big things that we think goes on in a sports mind: curiosity, reflection, creativity, courage, focus, and caution. We put them through that. Um, and can I do Einstein? Because sure, we no, went entirely course. through with him. Sure. Um, Einstein, we put his curiosity as a four. Um, do I have to explain each one? Like why we did that? It would be helpful. I mean, take your time. It's, yeah, it would be nice. Why, why the four for curiosity? Um, if there's a clear answer, I'd like to know what you're thinking about it. Because he's 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 curious uh, when he's when when he's divided when he's looking for answers to his questions, mm -hmm. and those answers eventually became very famous and started and became right now the definition for physics. Um, and that's what puts his curiosity so high. It's because he would never have had answers if he didn't have questions. Um, his reflection was a 3.5 because um, it wasn't that extraordinary, but some of his theories corresponded to other ones of his theories. So he would look back at one theory he's already made and said, what can I get from that theory to make something new? And that's why we gave him the 3.5 because it wasn't that extraordinary. It's just, yeah. What what strikes me about your categories is they're categories of the person, of the explorer. There's things that are going on inside them. It's not categorizing the challenge because you might give that a different set of categories, like the size of the unknown, for example. This is more like the explorer's response to the unknown. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And I think, I think, uh, usually the ones with the bigger unknown, or at least what we've got, the, the ones that had the more unknown that they solved, those were the ones who usually had higher scores. Okay. Mm. Like for Morris that yeah. we did earlier, his was in the two range, like 2.3 something. Because there wasn't, what, what was really unknown for him? Most of the stuff was just some of them. He mostly, it was mostly just, he was slightly an explorer because he had to explore dance, but it was, it's not really your best example of an explorer, I don't think. But Lewis and Clark, clearly the unknown would be yeah. larger. And Einstein, there, I mean, it's really a completely unknown. Yeah, like nobody knew anything about his theories before they came out. Of course they didn't because, well, they weren't out. So I understand the 32 point scale. I understand the 32. I understand you're giving each one of the categories uh, a number or weight. So curiosity has a greater weight than focus in the scale. Yes. How do you get a final score where you can compare them? How do you do Okay, that? so um, as you can see, we did the creativity, courage, focus, caution. We 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 gave all of them scores for um for Einstein, and then can we scroll down a bit? Because mm -hmm. that's step three. So that's step two, giving the explorers scores based on those. Now here's the real part. 
we took that four that he got in curiosity and multiplied it by 14 because remember we said that it was um it was 14 30 seconds um because we said it was 14 30 seconds um so that four times 14 that's 56 and this with reflection we said that 3.5 that we said he got 3.5 in reflection and then we multiplied it by 7 because we said it was 7 30 seconds was reflection and we did so with all the rest of them and then we added up the answers 56 24.5 14 point no 14 4, 5, 4 8, 3, and and it equaled 110 then we took 110 and we divided it by 32 and that's our answer we basically yeah and we got 3.4375. James, where did the idea come from for doing it this way? Can you remember back to well, the figuring of this, this out and where did that come from? I think we went from having the idea of, we said we wanted to do an explore meter. We wanted to give some way of defining how much of an explorer somebody is and then we had the idea of the putting the stick chart with this is actually the exact order that we invented them in so first we had the idea of the stick chart and we wanted to say how much of e we know these are going on in explorer's mind but how much of each and we kind of reasoned that out as i already told you um and all along we kind of wanted to grade them in a rubric that was just what we happened to do next i came in saying why don't we grade them in a rubric and then and then i say how about we grade them on what, what goes on in their mind. And Joseph said, but some things go on in their mind more. Joseph and Alex were telling me, some things go on in their mind more than others. And I said, yeah, we're gonna have to put that in. And so then I came up with a stick chart with them. They were actually really on to that with me. And then once we had the stick chart, that's where the math comes in because we took the scores and originally we um, we didn't do the multiplication. We actually did repeated addition before we found out that we could do multiplication. If Alex was actually the one who said, why don't we just do multiplication? But by then we were already out of time. So, um, and then I knew how to average. So I averaged them. And yeah, that's basically it. Have you ever done anything like this before? used any of the strategy and any of the math you've done or seen or heard about before. Wait, you mean using math in something using other than math. math? No, using math of this type in solving any kind of other kind of problem that you remember from earlier this year, fourth grade or younger years, or at home that your dad has talked to you about. Well, Is I this... think I know I've done it once before because I've done, I've done averaging. I know how to average right. and I know how to... I know how to, well, I think this actually might have been the first time where I was putting weight on numbers, like saying that curiosity would be the biggest, but I knew how to do it. I mean, I, fig I, I, I knew how to do it somewhere in the back of my memory, and the thing was I just had to kind of extract it, and I don't know why I knew how to do it. It's kind of made sense, because if you know how to do one thing, then you know how to do a lot more. If you know how to add, you literally know a quarter of math already. Because a quarter of math involves at least some form of addition. So, really all you have to do is learn one thing and then it just grows from there. And then you, you can do other things like this, they're fun, yeah. And then you, you can work with other people who help you with the non-math stuff that you aren't so good at and then you put it all together and you get something like this and then Mr. Spedding comes up to you and he says well why don't you join me for lunch I want to videotape you and then you say oh well okay um too bad that Joseph's absent yeah but you 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 um something new that you said now and that is it's really the result of your collaboration 
yeah. that this happened. Yeah. Without the collaboration, those uh, both Alex and Joseph contributed really substantial ideas and helped refine where this went. Yeah, I had I had a slight idea coming into the group, and they helped me define it. I guess in the parts that weren't math, because I, I I wanted to do something with averaging, because I thought averaging would get a more exact answer, and I wanted and I wanted to grade them on a rubric. At first, I just wanted to take their scores and average that, but then they, we were kind of talking, and I forget who it was, somebody, I think it was either Joseph, Alex, or somebody said, um, some things have more weight than others. Hmm. And then I said, well, we should probably figure a way to put that in there. And... But you could bring the math in. That's, that Joseph said about weight, but then mathematically you could apply that to the problem you had. Yeah, that's what they were just, they were doing that sort of support. They'd tell me, well, we need this. And I'd say, well, how can I work that into the math? And eventually we came up with a cool solution and we called it the Explorer Meter. <laughs> that's great. That was really fun. Um, I'd love to see the final numbers. It's the thinking behind it that I'm interested in. Cranking out the numbers, you know, you just crank out the numbers. But the, the thinking that went behind it, that was very interesting to me. This is Einstein right here. Yeah. He's 3.4375. 3, 3. So right. he's an explored. It's a three would mean he explores. Uh, he's kind of on the line of, like, a two, if, you, if you're below three, you are you explore, but you're not an explorer. Hmm. If you're above three, you're an explorer. And so he's an explorer, as shown here, because he's above three. But if you're just at three, then you're kind of like... You know what would be interesting, James, is put a, your average adult in there, or put a kid in there, or put a two-year-old in to see. Because you imagine two-year-olds are pretty curious. Everything needs to be turned upside so, down. Yeah, they... they, they I think they would get high in curiosity. I don't really think they reflect a bit, mm -hmm. a bit, but not. Not in the same way we would. Yeah, so they'd have low affection. Uh, I, they'd probably be hovering around the three mark. They might be your example of the three, actually. Come to think of it, because <laughs> it's hard to, and, and 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 because they're not extremely developed yet so they might be your example of the three they explore and they're almost an explorer because they explore so much but just because you explore a lot does that really make you an explorer so some of these would be very high but the part of us that we have as adults may be lower because they just don't have the ability to reflect the way we would yeah um although i have to say i have to say I've had ideas since I made this about how I would change it. So I'm looking a little bit at the clock, unfortunately, so we just have a couple more minutes, but how would you change it? I think it's more based on, yeah, there's this, but then there's also how much is there, like what is the weight of what they explore, not how much, like, if it, sure, you could explore a thousand Bugs. Right. Does that make you an explorer? Right, and and one thing that the two-year-olds might not be doing that we adults do is putting things together, so that they're developing what they do now determines what they're going to do next. Though you could say two-year-old two-year-olds do that as well. They do, but not in a, not in the same way. And I think an explorer, you would usually uh, you, usually. And I found this to be more foolproof than this. Um, the more that they, the more that they explore, explore, not the amount they explore, because they could explore thousands, babies, they explore thousands of things, like, truly, maybe even millions. There's just so much around them that they have to explore and experience, but they're all really small things that don't, mean anything. Well, Einstein is based on a whole lot of education, too. Whereas a two-year-old doesn't have anything like that, the background of prior knowledge. Because your reflection means t looking back and looking ahead, right? 
And so you could say a T-Rail might have that, but it's of a different quality than Magellan would have. 